An outstanding physician solved the problem of diabetes some years ago I received a clipping from a magazine describing the origin of the discovery of insulin. This is the essence of the article as I recall it. About 40 years ago or more, Dr. Frederick Banting, a brilliant Canadian physician and surgeon, was concentrating his attention on the ravages of diabetes. At that time medical science offered no effective method of arresting the disease. Dr. Banting spent considerable time experimenting and studying the international literature on the subject. One night he was exhausted and fell asleep. While asleep, his subconscious mind instructed him to extract the residue from the degenerated pancreatic duct of dogs. This was the origin of insulin which has helped millions of people. You will note that Dr. Banting had been consciously dwelling on the problem for some time seeking a solution, a way out and his subconscious responded accordingly. It does not follow that you will always get an answer overnight. The answer may not come for some time. Do not be discouraged. Keep on turning the problem over every night to the subconscious mind prior to sleep, as if you had never done it before. One of the reasons for the delay may be that you look upon it as a major problem. You may believe it will take a long time to solve it. Your subconscious mind is timeless and spaceless. Go to sleep believing you have the answer now. Do not postulate the answer in the future. Have an abiding faith in the outcome. Become convinced now as you read this book that there is an answer and a perfect solution for you. How a famous scientist and physicist escaped from a Russian concentration camp Dr. Lothar von Blankschmidt, a member of the Rocket Society and an outstanding research electronic engineer, gives the following condensed summary of how he used his subconscious mind to free himself from certain death at the hands of brutal guards in a Russian prison camp coal mine. He states as follows, I was a prisoner of war in a coal mine in Russia, and I saw men dying all around me in that prison compound. We were watched over by brutal guards, arrogant officers, and sharp, fast-thinking commissars. After a short medical checkup, a quota of coal was assigned to each person. My quota was 300 pounds per day. 131. In case any man did not fill his quota, his small food ration was cut down, and in a short time he was resting in the cemetery. I started concentrating on my escape. I knew that my subconscious mind would somehow find a way. My home in Germany was destroyed, my family wiped out, all my friends and former associates were either killed in the war or were in concentration camps. I said to my subconscious mind, I want to go to Los Angeles, and you will find a way. I had seen pictures of Los Angeles and I remembered some of the boulevards very well as well as some of the buildings. Every day and night I would imagine I was walking down Wilshire Boulevard with an American girl whom I met in Berlin prior to the war, she is now my wife. In my imagination we would visit the stores, ride buses, and eat in the restaurants. Every night I made it a special point to drive my imaginary American automobile up and down the boulevards of Los Angeles. I made all this vivid and real. These pictures in my mind were as real and as natural to me as one of the trees outside the prison camp. Every morning the chief guard would count the prisoners as they were lined up. He would call out one, two, three, etc., and when seventeen was called out, which was my number in sequence, I stepped aside. In the meantime, the guard was called away for a minute or so, and on his return he started by mistake on the next man as number 17. When the crew returned in the evening, the number of men was the same, and I was not missed, and the discovery would take a long time. I walked out of the camp undetected and kept walking for 24 hours, resting in a deserted town the next day. I was able to live by fishing and killing some wildlife. I found coal trains going to Poland and traveled on them by night, until finally I reached Poland. With the help of friends, I made my way to Lucerne, Switzerland. One evening at the Palace Hotel, Lucerne, I had a talk with a man and his wife from the United States of America. This man asked me if 132. I would care to be a guest at his home in Santa Monica, California. I accepted, and when I arrived in Los Angeles, I found that their chauffeur drove me along Wilshire Boulevard and many other boulevards, which I had imagined, so vividly in the long months in the Russian coal mines. I recognized the buildings, 
which I had seen in my mind so often. It actually seemed as if I had been in Los Angeles before. I had reached my goal. I will never cease to marvel at the wonders of the subconscious mind. Truly, it has ways we know not of. How archaeologists and paleontologists reconstruct ancient scenes These scientists know that their subconscious mind has a memory of everything that has ever transpired. As they study the ancient ruins and fossils, through their imaginative perception, their subconscious mind aids them in reconstructing the ancient scenes. The dead past becomes alive and audible once more. Looking at these ancient temples and studying the pottery, statuary, tools, and household utensils of these ancient times, the scientist tells us of an age when there was no language. Communication was done by grunts, groans, and signs. The keen concentration and disciplined imagination of the scientist awakens the latent powers of his subconscious mind enabling him to clothe the ancient temples with roofs, and surround them with gardens, pools, and fountains. The fossil remains are clothed with eyes, sinews, and muscles, and they again walk and talk. The past becomes the living present, and we find that in mind there is no time or space. Through disciplined, controlled, and directed imagination, you can be a companion of the most scientific and inspired thinkers of all time. How to receive guidance from your subconscious when you have what you term a difficult decision to make, or when you fail to see the solution to your problem, begin at once to 133. Think constructively about it. If you are fearful and worried, you are not really thinking. True thinking is free from fear. Here is a simple technique you can use to receive guidance on any subject, quiet the mind and still the body. Tell the body to relax, it has to obey you. It has no volition, initiative, or self-conscious intelligence. Your body is an emotional disc, which records your beliefs and impressions. Mobilize your attention, focus your thought on the solution to your problem. Try to solve it with your conscious mind. Think how happy you would be about the perfect solution. Sense the feeling you would have if the perfect answer were yours now. Let your mind play with this mood in a relaxed way, then drop off to sleep. When you awaken, and you do not have the answer, get busy about something else. Probably, when you are preoccupied with something else, the answer will come into your mind like toast pops out of a toaster. In receiving guidance from the subconscious mind, the simple way is the best. This is an illustration. I once lost a valuable ring, which was an heirloom. I looked everywhere for it and could not locate it. At night I talked to the subconscious in the same manner that I would talk to anyone. I said to it prior to dropping off to sleep, you know all things, you know where that ring is, and you now reveal to me where it is. In the morning I awoke suddenly with the words ringing in my ear, ask Robert. I thought it very strange that I should ask Robert a young boy about nine years of age, however, I followed the inner voice of intuition. Robert said, oh, yes, I picked it up in the yard while I was playing with the boys. I placed it on the desk in my room. I did not think it worth anything, so I did not say anything about it. The subconscious mind will always answer you if you trust it. 134. His subconscious revealed the location of his father's will A young man who attends my lectures had this experience. His father died and apparently left no will. However, this man's sister told him that their father had confided to her that a will had been executed which was fair to all. Every attempt to locate the will failed. Prior to sleep he talked to his deeper mind as follows, I now turn this request over the subconscious mind. It knows just where that will is, and reveals it to me. Then he condensed his request down to one word, answer, repeating it over and over again as a lullaby. He lulled himself to sleep with the word, answer. The next morning this young man had an overpowering hunch to go to a certain bank in Los Angeles where he found a safe deposit vault registered in the name of his father, the contents of which solved all his problems. Your thought, as you go to sleep, arouses the powerful latency, which is within you. For example, let us suppose you are wondering whether to sell your home, buy a certain stock, sever partnership, move to New York or stay in Los Angeles, dissolve the present contract or take a new one. Do this, sit quietly in your armchair or at the desk in your office. 
remember that there is a universal law of action and reaction. The action is your thought. The reaction is the response from your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is reactive and reflexive, this is its nature. It rebounds, rewards, and repays. It is the law of correspondence. It responds by corresponding. As you contemplate right action, you will automatically experience a reaction or response in yourself, which represents the guidance or answer of your subconscious mind. In seeking guidance, you simply think quietly about right action, which means that you are using the infinite intelligence resident in the subconscious mind to the point where it begins to use you. From there on, your course of action is directed and controlled by the subject of wisdom within you, which is all wise and omnipotent. Your decision will be right. 135. There will only be right action because you are under a subjective compulsion to do the right thing. I use the word compulsion because the law of the subconscious is compulsion. The secret of guidance The secret of guidance or right action is to mentally devote yourself to the right answer, until you find its response in you. The response is a feeling, an inner awareness, and an overpowering hunch whereby you know that you know. You have used the power to the point where it begins to use you. You cannot possibly fail or make one false step while operating under the subjective wisdom within you. You will find that all your ways are pleasantness and all your paths are peace. Highlights to recall one. Remember that the subconscious mind has determined the success and wonderful achievements of all great scientific workers. 2. By giving your conscious attention and devotion to the solution of a perplexing problem, your subconscious mind gathers all the necessary information and presents it full-blown to the conscious mind. 3. If you are wondering about the answer to a problem, try to solve it objectively. Get all the information you can from research and also from others. If no answer comes, turn it over to your subconscious mind prior to sleep, and the answer always comes. It never fails. 4. You do not always get the answer overnight. Keep on turning your request over to your subconscious until the day breaks and the shadows flee away. 5. You delay the answer by thinking it will take a long time or that it is a major problem. Your subconscious has no problem it knows only the answer. 6. Believe that you have the answer now. Feel the joy of the answer and the way you would feel if you had the perfect answer. Your subconscious will respond to your feeling. 136. 7. Any mental picture, backed by faith and perseverance, will come to pass through the miracle working power of your subconscious. Trust it, believe in its power, and wonders will happen as you pray. 8. Your subconscious is the storehouse of memory, and within your subconscious are recorded all your experiences since childhood. 9. Scientists meditating on ancient scrolls, temples, fossils, etc., are able to reconstruct scenes of the past and make them alive today. Their subconscious mind comes to their aid. 10. Turn over your request for a solution to your subconscious prior to sleep. Trust it and believe in it, and the answer will come. It knows all and sees all. But you must not doubt or question its powers. 11. The action is your thought and the reaction is the response of your subconscious mind. If your thoughts are wise, your actions and decisions will be wise. 12. Guidance comes as a feeling, an inner awareness, an overpowering hunch whereby you know that you know. It is an inner sense of touch. Follow it.